I came into the business, if you will, into the cantorate from a very classical golden age when, uh, when gender politics uh, started taking a hold, when the 1960s and uh, folk and rock started becoming much more popular as an American iconic expression, and the cantors had to adapt and adjust. When I came here, I was on the precipice of introducing a new form of technological outreach called the internet. And I really embraced it and saw it as a wave of the future. By 2004, I put a tripod in our balcony and started video recording and uh, really started getting into the idea of streaming before streaming existed. My relationship with Cantor Eicher, I greatly value that. And he was a key figure in, in, in the growth of our congregation and certainly, very obviously, in the music of our congregation. He's been a friend, an important friend, an important person who has been a part of my life, but much more so a part of my family's life. Well, I think that Cantor Eicher embodies uh, the family because he is always talking about his own family. I mean, his kids are so important to him, and that opens a conversation about your own family. And there was a time, almost exactly three years ago, when all of the clergy were at our barn conducting services. But I went to Cantor Riker because I knew that he was an animal person. And at the time, we had three very sick horses, and I asked him, I said, do you think it's possible for you to sing Misha Bera? To our, to our horses, and they came back, and they sang Misha Bera while holding our horses, and it was unbelievable. I think one of the things that makes Cantor Eicher such a wonderful leader is his passion. He cares about not just Judaism, but a lot of things. When he gets into something, he puts his whole self into it. Passion for music, passion for community, passion for trying new things, and all of those little pieces together make him who he is. Cantor Eicher has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to worship and ritual, and while he knows the tradition deeply, he doesn't force that tradition on what we do as a congregation, but he uses it to inform our community and enhance what we do. So in the B'nai Mitzvah process, most of our students really begin like week-to-week -week meetings with Ganter Eicher, like nine months beforehand. When you meet with somebody weekly, as he does, whether it is 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half hour, or sometimes longer, I'm sure that many a student can tell you about the lectures they've received from Cantor Eicher about how to live life or make their way in the world. So going through the B'nai Mitzvah process, not only uh, as a parent, but also alongside your teenager, it is a kind of a crazy, stressful time. Cantor has this wonderful way of bringing a calm and really making everybody feel proud of this wonderful milestone and proud of being Jewish. So when the kids were preparing for their B'nai Mitzvah, they would come once a week and it was just either one day or another and you'd come and you'd sit in the sanctuary and you'd wait for your child to get in there and they'd go up and they'd work with him. And so you get to see him work with not only your child but with the other children. And he would change himself with whatever child he was working with. And then there was times like kids would be messing around and he'd throw a football and you'd be like, I didn't even know we had a football up there with him. Like, My daughter Leah was one of the first uh, bat mitzvahs he did. And so my wife and I and Lori uh, Newmark uh, were called into his office. We went over the service and what would take place. And my wife volunteered that I played guitar. And he said, well, then you'll play at her service. And I said, you know, I, I really don't think it's my place to do that. It's my daughter's bat mitzvah. I don't want to take away from her day. And he explained, no, you'll be adding to the day. That's what we do. Cantor does a very good job of making sure that when we're in the sanctuary, it's not a performative experience, but that everyone's voice is important and everyone's voice is heard and people feel invited and called to sing with him. It's much more of a song leader style where he's inviting people to sing, whether it's in the more traditional sense of the prayers that they can latch on with him or also just the goofy, amazing, fun parodies and stuff that he does. It's just always a fun time and such a big personality and you never know what you're gonna get, but it keeps people on their toes and it's a lot of fun and people always look forward to joining in for those things. 
we started at BSKI and going back to when I was a small boy, five, six, eight years old, I was very moved by the prayer chanting of Lador Vador. To me, it was like a Jewish version of row, row, row your boat. Then we move over here, we join UH, they get to Lador Vador, next page, boom, they turn it. Whoa, 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 where's the chanting? Where's the, and they didn't have that. Well, then what happened was my daughter Paige, Barry's daughter Megan, they were getting a dual B'nai Mitzvah together. And Cantor Eicher, being the person he is, remembering, listening to the needs of the congregation, said, I remember your request about chanting Lador of Ador, but this time I want you two to do it. I think Cantor Eicher has given a lot to this congregation of himself. He was always striving to do something different and do something better and engage people. His music's eclectic, he's eclectic. That's okay, you can pull in whatever you love and whatever you do, and it's gonna fit in this temple. We're gonna make it work. I feel very fortunate that my family has like a strong generational connection with Cantor Eicher. He's working with me in something at, at my school where I teach right now and he came in and he said, I've had three generations of Rosenstocks today because he had lunch with my grandfather and my father and then he came and spent time with me. I would even credit that I wouldn't know my fiance if it weren't for Cantor. I know he's not going anywhere and he will definitely still be around and we're so grateful that he will stay in the community and keep teaching us and keep growing with us and keep supporting us because he's just been an amazing cornerstone for me and I'm so grateful. What I brought to this congregation goes way beyond what you see, what you hear, what you sense. What I brought to this congregation were three amazing women. Heidi, my wife, who really set the wheels in motion that brought us here to St. Louis. And she in her own right uh, has been more than a mentor to me, more than a wife. I think she has been probably my greatest teacher. Our two daughters, Laura and Lizzie, who we could not be more proud of, but have really fulfilled the brief as well. And they have married two men that I feel so blessed, and I dare say Heidi feels blessed, that support them unequivocally. There are so many people that have made this place possible. I, I, I would be really remiss if I leave out my musical sous chef, which is David Cohen, who's been here almost as long as I have. And the two of us, as they say, whip up a menu every single week. The impact United Hebrew Congregation has had on me uh, has, uh, has been profound and really inspired me to become somebody that I didn't think I could ever be. So looking at these 25 years and beyond, I think that this is not to me a retirement, but rather a retreading. But I'm excited to go on and to keep being me. But what I'm most excited for is that at the end of the day, on August 31st, I can look out at the congregation and say, Heidi, I'm coming home. La Dorva La Dorva La Dorva Dor Nagi God Lecha La Dorva La Dorva La Dorva Dor Nagi God Lecha Olam Netzach Netzachim Kedushat Echanakdish la <laughs> Lador, 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 Lador,